Welcome to Healthcare Musings, a podcast dedicated to the discussion of critical care, the medical field, and healthcare in general. Here is your host, Dr. Hesham Hasabala. Okay, continuing in our Getting a Job series. So, whether it's private practice or an employed model uh, with incentives and work RVUs and bonuses or whatever, you've finally, you've, you've looked at the job offer, you uh, made an interview, you, you went to the facility, you went to the practice, you went to the hospital, you went to the outpatient center, whatever. You did the interview, you met with the leadership, you met with potential coworkers, and you like what you see, and you are, you have made a decision and said, okay, I am going to now accept the uh, offer of employment. What's next? So what's next is two things. One is they'll either, it's either called a letter of intent or a term sheet. And basically what it is, is it'll, it'll show you, okay, this is what your terms of employment will be. Your salary will be this. You will get a commencement bonus of this with likely with a time commitment. Uh, Maybe there's loan forgiveness. Maybe there is uh, other things in the job like CME, uh, continuing medical education. Sometimes a, a lot of employers will give you a stipend for continuing medical education that you can use for conferences, for journal subscriptions, uh, state medical society memberships, uh, so on and so forth. And then so the, the, either the letter of intent or the term sheet will tell you all of the things that go into your compensation. And then you get a final compensation number. Okay. If you agree to that term sheet and you say, I like what I see, there's nothing here that uh, makes me uncomfortable, then they will send you the employment agreement. Okay. The employment agreement is a multi page contract, it is a legally binding contract where the employer, your potential employer, enters into an agreement with the employee. And there are a whole set of terms in the employment agreement. Typically, they say we need, you know, these are generalities. Obviously, the, the, the employment agreements are incredibly detailed. Um, and they, and they're, they vary depending on the state in which they're in because the, there are different laws in every state. So the employment agreement basically says we need a physician or an APP to work in our facility, you are a physician or APP, and because of this, we are going to enter into this agreement for you to provide medical services to us as our employee. And that's basically what it is. So it it outlines the job description, what you are expected to do in your job. Sometimes these job descriptions are extremely detailed that you have to see. For example, for me, you have to see consultations in the intensive care unit. Um, and that you will not re- ref- that you will not refuse to see people in the intensive care unit, for example, um, and then you are provide services. And then if you are, for example, if there are administrative roles that you're coming onto, which sometimes happens, then they'll outline what your ad- administrative duties are. Uh, for me, because I was hired as a medical director, my employment agreement had a whole list of things that are expected of me as an administrator as a medical director. So uh, these are the things we expect you to do as medical director. These are the things we expect you to do as uh, intensivist. Um, and so they, they outline that. And then there are, uh, you know, and uh, then, then, and this is where it's very important. This is why I want to talk about the employment agreement. There's one thing. One, it's illegally binding on you. Okay, this is a legally binding contract. So it's very important that you look at the terms so that later on you cannot be accused of being in breach of contract Uh, on both sides. Uh, You know, as an employee, I recruit physicians and APPs and we send them an employment agreement. You know, there is a duty for the employer not to be in breach of contract. And one way an employer can be in breach of contract is if they cannot provide you with the number of shifts that you're contracted. So many contracts say you're, you are going to provide a, an average of 
um, 14 shifts per month. So if I can't find work for you and you get less than 14 shifts a month, then I, as an employer, am in breach of contract and you can technically sue me for breach of contract. The, now the other thing goes, if you, the other thing is the same. If you, um, are not doing what you're supposed to do, the employer can sue you or just terminate the, the, the agreement for breach of contract. So that's why these, these employment agreements are very important for you to look through and read through because it is binding on you as an employee and on the employer as well. Um, and so it's very important that you, that, that you go through it. And especially with um, termination. So can the employer terminate you? Now, normally anyone can terminate the agreement for no reason at all, right? Um, you can just, you just don't like the job and you can just say, you know what, I quit. And that's you, technically you are, you are asking for a termination of the employment agreement. That's what quitting is, right? And we can, you know, technically an employer can say, you know what, we just don't like you anymore and we're going to terminate. Take a look at that. Are there termination without cause um, provisions in the contract? Because say, I mean, that, and, and kind of, you know, maybe ask about that because say you're, you think you're doing a good job, you are doing everything you can, you're working hard, you're doing everything you're supposed to do. Then the, the, the employer, because they don't like you, what do they just say, you know what, we're just going to terminate your agreement and we're, we're going to fire you. Well, well why? What, what, what's the, what, what did I do wrong? Did I do anything wrong? Well, we just, you know, we just don't, we, we have our own reasons. Um, they're confidential and we just fired you. I mean, that could be terribly disrupting, right? And then, and we'll talk about this in a separate podcast episode next about the non-compete. They can then enforce the non-compete and force you out of the entire area. We'll talk more about that later. Um, that, that can be very destabilizing. That can, you know, you have family and you, you're established in the community, you have mortgage and you have kids in school and, and all of a sudden your employer just says, you know what, you're, you're, you're fired. I mean, if, if that's in the contract, I would be very careful about that, right? Because they can just, for whatever reason, they don't like you, whatever you did something wrong, you upset the boss and then you just, you're fired. That's, that's not fair to you. Um, and at an employer, same thing can happen. I mean, technically you can just say, you know what, I quit. And that's, that's very uh, disrupting for us because now we have to recruit someone. It takes a lot of money to onboard someone to recruit. And then there's another uh, commencement bonus. And so either way, I think you have to, the, the, the termination clauses are very important to look through. Like, and, and if it's for cause, well, what is, what is the due process? So if they say we are terminating you for cause, right? For you breach the contract, then what are my rights for due process? What am I, how am I supposed to get a fair hearing? What, like, where, where, where is your accusation? Can, do I have a right to defend myself? How can I defend myself against so all these, you know, all these things? And a lot of, you know, you know, a lot of employers have human rights, not, not human rights, sorry, human resources departments that, that will outline, you know, different things. And if you keep violating the policies, they might put you on a performance improvement plan where that's like, like probation when you're on notice that if you don't um, fulfill the uh, terms of the performance improvement plan, then you're at risk of being fired, right? So, so all, so all of these things you got to look through, especially the termination clauses. Uh, and and again, most of the time, either side can terminate without cause, can just terminate, and then you have to um, you have to make sure the process is fair so that either side doesn't just quit on the other. The other thing is your notice period. Most of the time, you can't just quit and leave the next day. You have a notice period. A lot of contracts is 90 days or 120 days. And the reason why those notice periods are in that is because it gives them the employer time to find your replacement. Like if you just say, I quit, you know, and then you just leave the next day, now you have a whole schedule that can't be filled and that's not right. You're, you have an obligation to provide notice of termination. So if you're going to quit, you, you know what? Something, you know, say your spouse gets a residency and you have to move to a different state, right? That's, that's very common. Um, or God forbid, God forbid you have a family member that becomes sick and now you have to move 
to take care of that family member, God forbid, um, again, then you have to give notice that, okay, I am leaving the practice, and um, today, say, is, let's say, Monday's April 1st. I'm leaving the practice, I'm giving notice, and, uh, and my last day will be July 31st, which is with, with then 120 days later. The, um, so it's, it's, it's very important that you look at the notice period for termination, the terms of termination. If it's without cause, wh uh, what, are your, what are your redresses? If it's with cause, what is your due process? All those are very important. Also, again, go back, make sure you, make sure you agree with the job description. Make sure that you, they didn't just add tasks that you were not, that were not discussed about. Um, there are very the reason this is very important that you look at everything in an employment agreement is one, it's binding. Okay, uh, if if it's written in the contract, it's binding. Two, you know what? If it's not in the contract, it is not necessarily going to come through. If they have a productivity incentive, oh yeah, we have a productivity incentive. And you can get all this money, and you can make all this money. If it's not written in the contract, it does not exist. If it's not written down on paper, it you you can assume it does not exist. If you say partnership terms, whether you're in private practice and you want to become a partner, and you ask them how do I become a partner, and they say we'll talk about that, that's a big red flag. If it's not in the contract, it's it doesn't exist, right? So it has to be written in the contract. And, and so it's very important that you look through that. And if there's something that you remember being told, but it's not in the employment agreement, you have to ask that. Why, did, why is this not in the agreement? Uh, and, and, and figure it out. And the other thing is, everything's negotiable. Okay? So, you know, maybe the salary is not negotiable, right? This, this is our salary, right? You're the, maybe the job description is not negotiable. But perhaps there are... Things about tail insurance, malpractice insurance. We haven't even talked about that. Malpractice insurance. Maybe you can um, ask that they pay your tail from your other job. Um, maybe we'll talk about malpractice uh, and the insurance and tails and noses and things in, in, in another podcast episode. Um, there, there are um, uh, you know, other tasks that, that, that are negotiable. Most things in a contract are negotiable. And if you're reasonable... And their employer is reasonable. You can come to a mutually uh, agreed upon uh, resolution, right? Um, so, it, but uh, again, I have to reiterate: if it's not in the contract, it doesn't exist. If they make a verbal promise that they don't put in writing, that's a problem. That is a potential problem. Like, and you have to be on the lookout. And so, um, I would recommend it, they cost a lot of money. They can cost upwards of several thousands of dollars. But I would have a good healthcare employment attorney look at the contract um, you may think you know or you're savvy or you have friends that are lawyers i would be i it's worth the money believe me believe me if you get into a, a, a situation that you did not foresee and you're stuck and you're on the hook for thousands of dollars of um, a, a commencement bonus that now you have to pay back or a thousands of dollars in a tail in tail insurance that you know you have to pay back um it's just not worth it pay the, th the thousands of dollars that it might take you know maybe necessarily have to give the most high profile attorney in the most prestigious corporate law firm you don't but i would seek out a very good healthcare someone with a lot of experience reading and looking at employment agreements for physicians and apps Get that, 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 that lawyer to look through the contract. Typically, it's a fixed fee. Sometimes it can be two or $3,000 or more or less um, and have them look at, the, uh, look at the agreement. They have a different perspective and they're not, in, not invested. There's no emotion, right? You love the place. You love the location. You love the, the people. You love the practice. There's a lot of emotion. You don't want to lose that. You have to have someone who's not invested emotionally who can look at it objectively and point out pitfalls to protect yourself because this is very important that you need to protect yourself against nefarious actors. Even people can be very slick, but they can, you know, they can slip things into the contract that then can come to harm you later. So it's very important that you do your due diligence. Okay. So that was, those are basically the, the things uh, uh, that we should look out for for the employment agreement. Um, 
feel free to drop me a comment or, 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 or uh, reach out uh, by, by email um, if you have any other questions about this or, or, or you want to hear about other stuff or, or things that were not clear. Um, feel, please uh, uh, share this podcast with, with, with others if you like what you're, what you're hearing. Um, uh, uh, sign up for future podcasts at healthcaremusings.com. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Uh, this is Dr. Hashim Hasabala signing off.